welcome back to the Nerdy Neighborhood, everybody, and welcome back to your Friendly Neighborhood comic show. I'm your host, Lauren, your Friendly Neighborhood. Bye. And we are cooking with creatives today with our comic creator here, Zach Moonshine Howard. Um, you're going to learn why the moonshine is in there, guys. I promise there's a reason. Uh, but he is a comic book artist. He's been in the industry a long time. Uh, we're going to talk about his Kickstarter today with Image Comics. But also, you know, he's done a lot of things like Hellboy, Venom, Wolverine, all these big names you guys already know. But you guys should know the name Zach Howard. What's going on, Zach? Uh, nothing's going on other than I'm on your <laughs> awesome show this morning. And thanks for having me. My pleasure, man. Thanks for popping into the Nerdy Neighborhood today. I know we're all busy. Um, you are busy uh, going away at your Moonshine Bigfoot Kickstarter. Yeah. Absolutely. Which, I mean, what more could you want? I mean, Big Sh Bigfoot is gray on his own. Moonshine's gray on its own. You put them together, it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the peanut butter and jelly of comedic comics here. We got uh, there you uh, go. a cryptid uh, brewing homemade potato uh, liquor. So uh, yeah. uh, you, what more can you ask for in a comic book, right? Absolutely nothing else, man. Absolutely nothing else. Well, you guys are already on a really good roll with their campaign here. Yes. So voila, there it is. We're at the thirteen thousand five was that eighty or sixty, something like 560, that. Five sixty, I believe. Yeah. There you go. And I mean you're already over double your goal, but we still got a ways to go so that everybody can get the most perfect Moonshine Bigfoot book they can get. So before we get into that, tell us what the heck is Moonshine Bigfoot about? <laughs> well, it's uh, first if you if you pop this up, can you uh, press play on that trailer? Yeah, let me. See yeah, let's get people here. looking at. It. We're so proud of it. We have a VO actor, music, animation. I bet you've heard a lot of tales about Bigfoot. Well, now it's time to set the record straight. <sighs> Because we do things a little different here in Buzzard County. Because in this here story, the heroes are outlaws with hearts of gold and tanks of gas. These fellas might seem reputable, but they're bona fide retrobates. Sheriff's crooked as a dog's leg. Walter ain't bad. And the rest of these folks, well, hell. They're as weird as they come. Moonshine Bigfoot, the greatest cryptozoological action adventure comedy of all time. There you go. So that is so good, man. Yeah, thank you. We we worked our tails off of it with uh, Fallout Studios. Uh, we we hired a VO actor that could do Waylon Jennings, who's doing the the, the hillbilly uh, voice there. And uh, yeah, this would be great if you can just scroll a little bit through it. We can we can stop when you want to see something. We we spent a lot of time building this campaign to make it fun for people. But uh, to yeah. digress. Uh, Moonshine Bigfoot is basically a, a coming-of-age story of a young 20, 20 nothing uh, Bigfoot that uh, 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 basically uh, he's running the family moonshine business, which I'll circle back to, has a loving hippie girlfriend, and he's into hot rods, and uh, he runs moonshine for his family business, always outwitting the cops. However, uh, these new... Uh, uh, this new batch he has has a secret ingredient in it that's going to change the world, which uh, uh, gets the attention of our version of the Illuminati, uh, <laughs> so which is called Big Level. So they have to come after him uh, to stop his moonshine production, and he gets uh, sucked into a world conspiracy. And all he wants to be is just a happy, good old boy delivering his moonshine. So, uh, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, it's it, the, the high concept is basically uh, uh, it's kind of a loving satire of 1980 Americana pop culture. So mm -hmm. 
when I was a kid, I was, you know, seven years old, six years old, eight years old, whatever, uh, uh, TV and cinema and pop culture was a little bit more innocent. It didn't have the heavy social weights and things like that, which are necessary. We got to fix this world. But what I miss is comic books are just so heavy handed and dark and grim and morose and the weight of every character, I, yeah. which is important. You need everything. That's the beauty of our comic book medium. But we just seem really lopsided right now that that's all we get. That's all mm -hmm. we get. Um, we're not trying to make any real point here other than uh, uh, we want people to have fun, but with a high level story. It's, it's a goofy comedy that I think fills a, a much needed hole in comic books right now. But two, we're bringing a plus level art, a plus level art. But between Nelson, Daniel, myself, and Steve Ellis, we have a box full of awards from Eisner nods to Harvey's to uh, uh, all sorts of indie awards, uh, Amazon books of the month, all this stuff like that. So we're not chumps. We're really passionate about this and we're going to bring a hundred percent. And I guarantee this is not only going to look better than any book on the shelf or at least compete with the best books out there uh, ever. Uh, it's also going to curl your toes with laughter. I promise you. It's so funny. We're so proud of this. Uh, all of us put our side projects or other books aside right now because this one just felt like lightning in a bottle. Um, yeah. And that's what we're trying to fill. We're trying to, it originally started us making fun of Dukes of Hazard and mm -hmm. laughing about how much we liked it as a kid. But then as you get older, it just seems there, there's a soul, there's that weight to it. I didn't know what the Dixie flag was and what it meant and, and mm -hmm. the terrible history that uh, it does represent and, and, yeah. and all that pollution that comes with it. Uh, no matter your feelings about it, it comes with this charged history now. And when as a kid, I just enjoyed seeing good old boys running from the cops and making them look like idiots. And the same went for like Knight Rider and A-Team and, and when G-Force first hit, the first wave of uh, Japanese animation and Speed Racer, mm -hmm. my next cover is a Speed Racer tribute. Um, so we're trying to pull in all those fun elements. There you go. Uh, there, there's one of the covers. That's our 80s movie poster uh, where you have your traditional uh, 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 collage. So that's our movie poster for it. And as you can see, it's Goofy, Hot Rods, all mm -hmm. of our fun characters, uh, uh, his awesome girlfriend. We wanted to tell a story instead of a ditzy, useless girlfriend. She has an exterior that you're, is going to uh, 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 kind of mask how important she is in the, the story. And these two mm -hmm. truly love each other. And I think that's also missing in the drama of comics where people are kind of cardboard cutouts, all the side characters are cardboard cutouts. We want to mm -hmm. tell a story within this goofy surrealist world that we came up with. Bigfoot's the grounding element. He's the skeptic of the entire world, uh, even though he's a cryptid. Um, mm -hmm. He's kind of like our Dana Scully in X-Files. Yeah. He, he needs to see the evidence. Uh, he's and uh, But he's also... He has, a, he's going to have a choice. He has to do the right thing, not the easy thing in this story. And those are always my favorite coming of age stories. Just like when I did Wild Blue Yonder, that got popular mm -hmm. as a coming of age story with a 18 year old female, very Miyazaki. Mm -hmm. This one is kind of more like if Gru and Preacher got married and had a kid, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, maybe with a little Justice League International from the late eighties, just, mm -hmm. We, we want to sidestep and take you on an adventure that doesn't echo the real world uh, as far as visuals. Uh, it, it's going to be a brilliant, surrealist cartoon uh, mm. of a comic book. However, it's going to have some overriding you know, values and tales of morality in it, within it, and self-discovery. And I think that's rare for a comedy. And I think comedies are best. I miss comedies like... I mean, I think everybody can uh, uh, relate to Ghostbusters. Absolutely yeah. absurd comedy. But the reason it it all it lasts forever is the characters are endearing. You want mm -hmm. them to win. You're not just a voyeur to see what's going to happen. You're rooting for them to win. You want right. them to get into trouble, but then fight their way out. And that's that's the key to telling a good story. You're not you know when people start caring about what's going to happen to the characters. 
I think that's when you win. You take them on a journey rather than just this weird voyeur, you know, people just looking at it and going, okay, well, uh, there's that. So we're really trying to, to bring the fire with this. And I think I have the crew and I, I know this is lightning in a bottle by the response people have been giving it. Yeah. And I think it fills a hole and uh, uh, in the industry, a much needed one. I'd rather laugh. Uh, like I was saying the other day, uh, who who wants to watch Saving Private Ryan every week for the rest of her life? You know, right. it's a beautiful movie, but I saw it. I don't want to sit in a corner and cry and not sleep the rest of my life. You know, right. <laughs> it's an important work of art that everybody needs to see, but Mm -hmm. There seems to be no balance of where you just get in and start laughing and you want to just see these people be goofy and, and do stupid things and and uh, save the day. And that's kind of what I miss and that's what we're trying to create with this. Yeah. And you've, you've you know, kind of, you talked a bit about your team. Um, you got Steve Ellis, you know, mm -hmm. co-creator and penciler. You got Mike Marlowe, co-creator in the script. Uh, you got Nelson Daniel with the coloring. Uh, you got Claire Meeks, if I'm reading that right. Uh, probably yeah, it is. Perfect. We also and call her Claire from Meth. You yep. Can, you can... <laughs> yep. There you go. See, I can't read my own writing. That's completely my fault. Uh, you got Thompson. Thompson Knox, Knox uh, lettering. Knox. There we go. That's it. Yep, yep. Yep. On letterer. And Ed Lavelle with the logo design. So, I mean, these are big names. Like, even though I can't read my writing, <laughs> these are big names. So, like you said... You know, I know you mentioned to me about, I think you mentioned already, you know, 75 plus years of comic book experience. So you guys yeah. are, you know, you guys have had experience. You've done a lot of you guys have done big G work. You've done image before you've done all these different things. And now you all are coming together and saying, let's make something that's a love letter for comic fans, as you said. And I just absolutely love that because this just looks so fun. It looks gorgeous. Um, and I think I agree with you in terms of like, I'm tired of reading the really dark, heavy stuff all the time. Um, there's some great stuff I've read recently that's yeah. my favorite work that is really dark and all that. But yeah, I think we need some breathers, man. We need to just enjoy it and not also overthink everything in comics. Um, to Tyler, an extent. Right? So I think this is a great escape. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And yeah, to your point. Steve Ellis used to draw Lobo, and then now yeah. he's one of the most famous Magic the Gathering painters ever. He has some yep. of the most famous, like, uh, goblin cards and all the other mm. millions of things he does. I, don't, I haven't played Magic the Gathering in 20 years, but uh, <laughs> you have his cards, and he wanted to get back. He did it with me last year, and they're I'm bonded over the two weeks while we're traveling South Africa. And uh, he mentioned he wanted to get back into comic books. And uh, mm. I was working on another dark, my opus, it's called Dead Earth Pioneers, but it's 450 mm. pages. It's going to take me a while to get through it. Yeah. Uh, and this came out as a joke, uh, but then started as a lot, of, a lot of good humor does. It has a spark of life in it. So over a six month period, we're all joking about it. And all of a sudden we have this world built that just yeah. kind of came to life. And when we showed it to Image, they, they signed us on with a concept drawing and a paragraph that I wrote. So then oh, wow. I, I had to make the damn thing. So uh, put the team together. Everybody's hyper motivated. Um, yeah, scroll down. We'll show you some fun stuff. Uh, that's the movie poster. Here's Bigfoot. There's the concept art that sold the series. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll, when you get to the pages, I'll, I can explain... Uh, 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 kind of what he uh, here we go interiors so here we're even doing a as you say love letter to comics here's page one a nod to Superman fans and I guess Moses too but uh -huh. the forest is burning down Bigfoot's parents desperately uh, as their home is burning to death put a bundled baby Bigfoot on the back of a, a logging truck logging truck escapes the fire makes its way to the Georgia-Alabama southern border, hits a bump, baby falls out. Uh, baby Bigfoot's found by uh, a kindly, childless, moonshining couple that <laughs> raise him as their own. And then we, we jump cut to when he's about 25 years old and uh, doing what he does best, and that's running hot, hot rods and moonshine <laughs> uh, for the county. Um, and uh, it's just funny how... What we love about this, we, we get to kind of uh, uh, tickle that child in you 
especially people my age, though we try to make it for everybody. It doesn't matter what generation you're in. Yeah. We try to bring humor uh, to it and a good story, which overrides generations anyways, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or generational gaps at least. Uh, but in that, we're trying to give a lot of Easter eggs and pull in their tropes from, from this time, i.e. Dukes of Hazard, Smokey and the Bandit. As I said, G-Force, our bad guys influenced by Robotech a little bit. We're trying to... We're trying to incorporate everything from that era and then even our uh uh see his girlfriend oh by the way his girlfriend uh is, is she's a 1981 uh modern hippie at the time uh oh. our beautiful girl but we're again we're trying to uh, uh her facade of beauty uh is is uh a misdirection because she's far more important to bigfoot in the story that than we originally show um, mm -hmm. she's actually a very empowered, smart woman and, uh, uh, brave as well. And, and we will see that, but we're setting her up at first. Uh, this will be funny. She, she's proud that, uh, she as a, an independent woman, she sells pictures of her feet in the back of catalogs back in the day. <laughs> and, uh, she has a, a big international business. Um, and that's why in the middle of this car chase, she has to get ready. So she's painting her nail, you know. You know how it is. Uh, poor women Getting have ready to work. Go pay they her bills. Get <laughs> done, right? and, uh, any way you can. So in the middle of jumping ravine, she's she has more pressing needs. But she was, was blessing her sweaty socks one night in a harvest moon ceremony. And she dropped her psilocybin mushrooms and moonshine Bigfoot still. Ooh. And all the magic mushrooms grew into it. And that's the uh, uh, impetus for... Uh, uh, brewing a special moonshine <laughs> that, that, unbeknownst to Bigfoot is going to set him into uh, the wheels in motion for the greatest conspiracy that the world's ever known. <laughs> and he's our reluctant hero that's just trying to live his good old life in the backwoods uh, as a country boy. So but like <laughs> all great reluctant heroes, he, get, he has to save the world in the meantime and his friends along the way. Uh, of course. There's, there's always... I just love how random that is. Like, the whole plot of the story comes from this random ass, you know, kind of side plot or this other, you know, story with another character, right? His girlfriend, which is completely legitimate, but you're like, okay, that's just her thing, whatever. Immediately creates the full chaos. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, we, I, I'm really proud of their relationship. I, I've done a lot of books, and again, usually when you see romantic relationships... The only other one that I did that I thought felt real was Wild Blue Yonder between Cup, Tug and Cola. For that mm. was one of my more popular indie series back in the day. Uh, mm. uh, that one felt real, so that always affected me. That if you build real relationships, it's, it becomes more tangible and valuable to the readers. And I know every writer and storyteller out there is going to say, "Well, that's what I do." I, I get it. We all try, um, but it, it's a huge focus of mine to breathe life into even absurdist characters. Uh, mm -hmm. Like we have Uncle Pineapple, the disgraced former child show star that uh, runs the black market or his actual, mm -hmm. uh, his ventriloquist dummy or, or puppet runs the black market because he's too drunk to. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, we we just have a bunch of fun, absurd, uh, it, it, it's a surrealist world that we're trying to have fun, but it's a cleverly disguising, I think, a deep character evolution story, you know, with action and adventures. So we're, man, we're trying to bring everything for everybody. And, and, you know, I hope people give us a shot. Uh, as you can see with the artwork, with the, the trailer, we are bringing fire. There's Amethyst, my girl. <laughs> I so, figured I'd uh, bring up the, the character stuff that uh, we got. In please the press do. This is a nice full body. It's really cool to see him this way. Yeah. We, uh, we really wanted to get the feel of the characters. And two, Steve and I, Steve's a longtime cartoonist and painter. Mm -hmm. As people that know my crap, it's very detailed and heavy and dark. I do books for Joe Hill, Mike Mignola, and Aliens, mm -hmm. and Blood and Gore, and, and Deep Horror, and blah, blah, blah. So I, I felt it was, it, it might be, I am really into like, creating new bands, you know, like uh, to create the new mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin. It really brings me a lot of joy working with other creatives rather than mm -hmm. just sitting in my basement office by myself 24 seven, which I do anyways. So these collaborations <laughs> mean a lot to me. And Steve Ellis is a phenomenal cartoonist. 
it's and very traditional as far as comic book arts uh where i'm very self-taught and hyper rendered and, and heavy and realized artwork so this is literally our second drawing that we did together and you can see our styles are already merging it's mm -hmm. this beautiful animated figure work but then i put this really kind of more realistic heavy rendering on top of it and it I think we're very unique in the sense that it kind of brings it to life and it has a lot of volume for a cartoon. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's somewhere in between our styles and I think there's magic in, in between that. And then he put Led Zeppelin on, or Led Zeppelin. He put, <laughs> I went, Led Zeppelin's coloring my book, Lauren. Uh, but no, uh, Nelson Daniel, the best colorist ever to live in comics. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then he's coloring on top of it. I just think we have, as far as artwork goes, I. Even though this is an image comedy, I think we can rival anybody in, in the industry. I'll put my book up against anybody as far as quality will go. Uh, 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 yeah. I mean, it looks, it looks so great, man. Like, I, I really agree with you. These characters really feel alive. And I think that is both the combination of the touches you put on it and then, you know, Ellis's cartoon style coming together. Yeah. I think that's what really makes these kind of come to life you know you got some ghostbuster influence i can see here there you go really we're trying fantastic. to pull in those trucks these are our bumbling uh abfac american bigfoot aliens and cryptid hunters by the way i'm beyond spitting with the patch that i designed that's my favorite thing i've drawn so far it's just a side element but now i want that patch uh on I all my should make it for like cons and stuff that's yeah we did uh stickers of it and they're actually selling uh, patches are probably next. Uh, it's kind of a yeah. no-brainer. But these are a bumbling, um, a ragtag group of uh, uh, very different people that came together that all witnessed Bigfoot at some point in time. And mm -hmm. while they're chasing Bigfoot in the beginning of the, the story, they're going to witness something uh, that uh, uh, really hypercharges them because they're going to think they see mm -hmm. uh, that alien craft that you see in the patch. So oh. there's a reason that patch that, that basically comes to life, uh, mm -hmm. though they think they saw that. Uh, we'll see what actually really happens. So, uh, but yeah, these are our idiots. Oh, here's Uncle Pineapple. <laughs> so this is our disgraced former child star. That uh, he's a blithering, just blathering drunk, a blither, whatever the word blithering is, blithering a word. I want it to be blithering, uh, blabbering. I would go blabbering, blabbering, blithering <laughs> drunk. Uh, so. Uh, uh, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, he was a famous kind of Captain Kangaroo type uh, 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 child, you know, show star. Uh, mm -hmm. Became a, a, a terrible drunk, but he runs the black market for the South. And this is who Bigfoot delivers his, his uh, uh, moonshine to. And he has a speakeasy in there uh, mm -hmm. in his fake gas station that were, is going to be a set location where... Uh, on our Kickstarter, we tried to make it really fun for everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. it, the, these tiers already went, but we may open it up again. Uh, people get to be in the comic book series. You can mm -hmm. be in a speakeasy drinking with Bigfoot and his friends. Uh, that's a non-speaking role, but you get the page, too, that mm -hmm. you appear on. And then, yeah. two, uh, uh, someone uh, it went in three minutes. It was one of our first tiers wow. gone. Somebody mm -hmm. gets to be the... Uh, uh, bartender for the speakeasy and that's a Ooh. speaking role so somebody has already chosen to be part of our comic book series and and uh, -huh. uh so we're trying to have fun with that and make this world inclusive to fans too and uh that they get to come into the speakeasy regardless his bird who's a proper uh with his proper london british accent he's the one who actually runs the black market uh, oh, I, love <laughs> I love that. Now we have jokes. Like, you know, when ventriloquists, they like drink water while the like their puppets talking. Well, right. our our Uncle Pineapple will be uh, uh, blindly puking and passed out while the bird's running the business and stuff like that, just <laughs> as a joke. Uh, That's fantastic. So, yeah, we're all of our characters we tried to make really fun uh, and then thread the story together with them so they all connect. They're all endearing in their own ways. Even the bad guys uh, uh, have their moments. And those are my favorite stories when you kind of root for the bad guy too. You want, you kind of want every, or you, you at least are endeared to them enough that you don't want to see them lose anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we got a, a bunch of wild characters, man. Ah, Thaddeus the 13th. He's yep. the heir apparent of Big Level, 
the uh, the the conspiracy that's older than than uh, recorded history. He's a, that's the same guy. Yeah, he's uh, mm -hmm. our insecure uh, young man that has more money and 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 uh, 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 assets and everything is at his disposal, but he's extremely insecure because he comes from. He's standing in the shadow of very powerful men. Uh, mm -hmm. So in his insecurities, you can see like the very last, the bottom drawing there where he's in this goofy outfit. Yeah. Uh, what, our joke with him though, he's so insecure that people think he's a bad leader. He does, uh, remember that show, Undercover Boss? Oh, uh, yeah. Where, well, I watched one episode and or part of one that episode. I couldn't get through it. But what mm -hmm. I was laughing about is the disguises that they put the bosses in are so <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, yeah. like they're a $3 wig, you know, and glasses without lenses and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So Thaddeus, instead of ruling the world, he dresses up as, say, like a janitor and then tries to listen in on other employees what they're saying about him mm -hmm. uh, instead of being the leader of uh, uh, the free world uh, secretly uh, mm -hmm. running uh, 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 the Illuminati. Regardless, uh, yeah, so he's trying really hard, uh, but uh, not quite, more thrust than vector, shall we say. Uh, and and uh, uh, he finds out about uh, this moonshine and, and what it does to affect people in a way that is going to make them, uh, they're not going to be able to be controlled or, or available for propaganda from uh, both uh, big level and the government and all that. You can see through it with the moonshine. And right. uh, after a senator accidentally drinks it and goes on a, a bender uh, of the truth on camera, that's when uh, the Illuminati comes to set things straight. They got to find out what's going on and that leads them mm -hmm. to Bigfoot. And uh, yeah. they use all the ridiculous resources and stupid vehicles and monsters to go after. Uh, yeah. So there's Thaddeus. <laughs> I, we we love see, good old daddy yes having issues <laughs> yes he's a nice he's like a comic book artist very insecure though okay oh. <laughs> there, there's some there's some half self-insert there guys always that's, that's why you make good characters <laughs> even in the doofy bad guys you got to put a little of your little of yourself in yeah and, and I mean, I think that makes it real too, right? Like yep. we've all got a little bit of not great stuff or insecure stuff with us. Oh, you're you talk, you, yeah. You talked about some other. Uh, you talked about like the you can become a character in the book and stuff. So I wanted to hear more about this merch and these other rewards you got going on. So yeah, it was becoming popular enough that we started making merchandise for it. That's doing pretty well. Uh, oh, we have a million T-shirts to choose from uh, at a really good price because of the printer. My I have a pro printer deal uh, uh, with mm. my Geekly printer that can make t-shirts. So we can do a lot of things inexpensive, uh, Lee. Uh, one of them is sticker packs, which are a no-brainer. But we also have the beer coaster set, uh, which mm. we're pretty proud of. Uh, we have our key the, That's actually our best seller is the, the coasters right now. I mean, that's um, a deal. You get six really great quality stuff for 10 bucks. You can't beat that. Yeah, we're trying to show people we're not grifting them. We're trying mm. to reward people you know, for, for taking part in this and you can bundle up. Those are the add ons. Uh, here's our new keychains, and those are already selling well. And of course I don't even have three cars, but I got one of each because I have to have them. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, we have a lot of things like that for stretch goals on top of our normal tiers for books, original art, uh, 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 but f Oh, or for add ons for stretch goals. I do want to hammer this home, uh, uh -huh. to the viewers. Uh, this is the most important thing I want uh, your viewers uh, and listeners to to uh, see and hear is mm -hmm. we know you're taking a chance on us. I Although I have a, a, a long legacy and a career, I'm also not a superstar, as you mentioned earlier. I'm not Todd McFarlane or, or any of these big names that just bring money instantly. So I know you're taking a chance on us. And even though I know we're going to make an A-plus book, that's only my word. So what we're trying to do, since we have three long time, four long time comic book artists uh, 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 on this book and talent and, and uh, etc., what we're trying to do is uh, we already hit all four of our stretch goals. So what that means is any person at any tier, if you back this from a, a gas money to a digital comic book, all the way up to buying a double page spread, a cover, uh, to peering in the book, 
all the sketch covers, anything in between, any level of backing, any level, even a dollar, you get 13 books at the end of this campaign. So starting next month, you're going to have 13 books to download and they're not chump change. So go up just a touch. I'll show people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll show you that we're not, we're not uh, uh, giving any crap. So uh, yeah, first one is our animation company's book called America Kaiju. And we chose a Kaiju book because uh, we're, in, we're in a cool monster book. So that yeah. was our first simple uh, uh, t uh, stretch goal that were kind of like a thank you. So there's the first three issues of that series. Our mm -hmm. second one is when we start getting series. As you can see, the Blacklist Underground Sketchbook. Uh, it, this mm -hmm. was uh, for uh, a, a podcast that I did with fellow pros like Dan Panosian, Jeff Johnson, a whole bunch of big names doing Mignola stuff, uh, doing all mm -hmm. the classics, Jack Kirby, John Buscema. Ooh. And this is, so you get artwork by all these famous artists done by myself uh, and another famous and or legendary artist as we talked about uh, uh, the, the, the legendary artists we were doing tributes to. That mm -hmm. entire sketchbook used to be only available either when I was at a, a convention selling it at a table or people mm -hmm. that were patrons of the sketchbook or of, of the podcast. So you get that out of print book. The second mm -hmm. one is Groom Lake by Ben Templesmith, which people mm -hmm. might know from 30 Days a Night. So you get a free mm -hmm. book of that. Third stretch goal, this is our giant one. You get yeah. my most famous cover process sketchbook. So that's 16, I believe, 17 years of me doing covers in, in throughout the comic book industry, all my famous ones, and it's behind the scenes. So you see them from pencils to inks, mm -hmm. even thumbnails. And I do DVD extras. I talk about each one, why, it, yeah. what editors were telling me, why I chose things, what I had to change. That was my mm -hmm. most famous sketchbook. It's recently out of print. It's 60 something pages. You get that for free. And that is 100% out of print. Then the book next to it is with the werewolf with the, the revolvers there. Mm -hmm. That's called High Moon. And that's Steve Ellis's famous book. You get the entire graphic novel of the, an out of print DC book um, for free. For just literally signing up for this. Any, yeah. any backing. So you get a full graphic novel and an out of print My Most Famous sketchbook as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that that tier is my favorite tier, of course, not just because my sketchbook, because <laughs> I love High Moon and those that have seen it before yeah. know why I love it. It's a good book. Um, mm -hmm. And it's Steve Ellis is one of his his most famous book. If it's not a, if not his most famous book other than Lobo. Uh, mm -hmm. So you get that and then you scroll down. And here we go. Here's our most recent one. We got to come up with a new stretch goal, everyone. So there will be more <laughs> books. Uh, we just haven't come up with it yet. We've been too busy. Uh, but that will be, we will have one more stretch goal within the next few days. Uh, last one is Claire Meath was my assistant uh, that mm -hmm. has become super famous all, all of a sudden. I mean, she has 100,000 mm -hmm. Instagram followers. Her sketchbooks sell out immediately. And she does one each year. And uh, mm -hmm. since she was uh, the valedictorian of SCAD, which is the Savannah School of Art and Design, yep. she's a slayer, by the way, uh, her books have just sold out. Uh, and she, her, her big book, uh, Mother 47, just came out through CEX, is tearing it up on mm -hmm. fire. Well, regardless, she made her first four out-of-print sketchbooks available uh, for this series. So you get the first four Claire and Me sketchbooks uh, nice. for this goal. Yeah. Out of print, 100% out of print, and will never be printed again. And on top of that, you get a little artist known by Ashley Wood, his book called String Divers. One of the uh -huh. most famous illustrators on earth uh, put one of his books up for this. So, heck yeah. There's there's those 13, and, uh, and on top of that, you get the four comic books, uh, no matter what tier you do, from digital to uh, was signed by the entire creative crew. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even mm -hmm. matter. Uh, you get all these 13 books. So we're trying to show, we understand you're taking a chance on us. So even if you hate our book, you're going to have 13 others to choose from uh, to <laughs> read it own. And that's uh, yeah. something I want to say. 13 You get 17 total books as of today for mm -hmm. $1 back, you know, which... Can't beat that at all. We're really trying, I hope people take a chance on us. And we're we're trying to show with the, the trailer... We're not half-assing this. We are bringing the fire. And uh, yeah. we want to reward people for taking a chance on us. We're not asking for a lot. But what this does, 
since this is an image book, we have this is self-funded. So we got mm -hmm. I have a team of five people I have to pay. And mm -hmm. and uh, the more money we can get, the more money we can actually get to a living wage while making this. And yeah. uh, uh, we're doing well right now, but it'd be great if we can just get a few more shekels to to uh, 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 just make this a little easier on us so we don't have to take as many side jobs while producing this series. Yeah, so, which is absolutely. a little distracting. And um, I, know, I know one thing you have spoken about as well in the past and such, um, you are, have a big passion for, you know, helping young artists, you know, get yes. in, in the profession as well. Yeah, that's one of my, uh, uh, with or without a Kickstarter, we usually, when I do Kickstarters, I put in the, the portfolio section, which I didn't do this year because I just do it free for so many people. Uh, mm -hmm. I mentor a lot, like I did Claire Meath, who's now my studio mate, uh, the, 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 uh, who's part of this project. Yeah. Um, I do, it, I think it's really important, and I don't think pros do this enough, people that have been around, my peers, uh, they usually only pull up new artists when they want to use them, i.e. make money off mm -hmm. of them. I think it's more important. It, it was really hard for me to break into this industry. I had no money. I slept on a park bench one San Diego con. Uh, mm -hmm. No food, no nothing. And you, that's what you got to do to break in and, and you do whatever you have to do. However, it was miserable. I had almost no help from anyone. And I eventually made it. So it was always a passion of mine to help younger people get over that hump because most people can make it about 70% of the way, let's say, but then they get mm -hmm. exhausted and it doesn't yeah. look like you're going to make it. And it's, it's like a tractor pull. The further you get, the harder it is. You're, you're mm -hmm. starting to get exhausted. Your family members are like, what the F are you doing? You know, you're ruining your life and all this stuff. They do it out of love. They're worried about you, but to make it, it's just, mm -hmm. it's really hard. And, it's a long, lonely road. So it's, it is a passion of mine to do what I can to assist those people, i.e. help them get over that hump, learning how to draw better, learning how to write a little better, learning how to be more professional in their storytelling, understanding certain things that you absolutely have to be good at in this medium that often goes without being said by other pros, or if they do say it's in a very obtuse way, you need to get better at anatomy, get better at storytelling, but they don't know the next step. They just, so they're just copying other people. I like to help them and teach them. This is why you don't panel stack. This is why mm -hmm. you do directional panels. This is how you move eyes through a page. Hey, have yeah. you thought about moving your camera up here? There's no budget. You why keep your camera on a little track, <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, uh, and then also introduce them to, editors and publishers and things like that uh and then after that they usually tend to do well on their own but that is a, a yeah something that that brings me a lot of fulfillment and joy is seeing somebody go from an amateur to a pro and i i like i do my best to facilitate that uh with a lot yeah. of my extra time and yeah it almost really works out yeah, and I absolutely love that because I think I think that's so important. Like that that's how this community and this medium survives is through other people lifting each other up even when it takes their time away, even when they're not making money, like you said, off it. It's just to help everybody out. I think that's so important. And that is one of my favorite things about you and about this campaign is that it's, you know, the this campaign, this book, it's a love letter to comic fans, it's a love letter to comics. It's also a love letter to comic creators and understanding how that works. And the fact that you and the entire team are willing to do this with the bare minimum, right? But yes. of course, if you get more, then you're going to make the best possible for everybody involved, including us as fans, which I think that is more than anybody can ask for. So you all are going all out with this campaign. It is, it, it is something that I could see, you know, growing in the next five years to becoming one of the biggest Kickstarters yet, um, you know, in the future, if y'all kept going with it. Y'all are just doing amazing. Honored, honored. And with the reaction we've had it to your point, we are already planning the sequel. Uh, ha -ha. <laughs> it's called Canada Ball Run, a play on Cannonball Run. And he has to go, uh, he has to uh, uh, run uh, uh, illegal maple syrup across the border. <laughs> so, That's fantastic. Uh, it was, so we planned on uh, taking this character around the world and uh, 
uh, uh, having fun adventures, meeting other cryptids. There's one other cryptid in the story, a chupacabra, which has mm -hmm. an interesting side story that will come to fruition throughout the series. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the only true cryptid in the series. But each mini series we do, if we can keep this going, will be will will involve other cryptids in each each version of it to have fun with them as well. So uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so far so good. The, it's been great. If uh, people take a chance on us, we try to reward you the best we can, respect mm -hmm. your dime, and uh, just know that we might be able to uh, eat some food while making this if you give us <laughs> a few shekels. So, and be part of the greatest cryptozoological action adventure comedy of all time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely well so we're recording this a couple days before this video will release so these guys watch it at home it says seven days here but it's gonna be about five days because it'll come out probably monday so y'all have plenty of time to get in on this but don't wait till new comic book day back it while you can because kickstarter doesn't take your funds until it's done anyway so you might as well you might exactly. as well get one of the cool things you can get with you know 13 extra bucks i mean you just you can't beat this this is so cool it is so fun even if this isn't your cup of tea get it as a gift for somebody by the time it comes in it'll be christmas or you know next year depending on if delays unfortunately happen hopefully they don't <laughs> but this guy's coming to everybody's doorstep he's coming zach this is just so freaking cool anything else you want to share about the campaign that we need to know today one last thing, we a portion of uh, the proceeds we make, we started at C2E2. Uh, when they had me as a guest, they asked me to do a charity for St. Jude's, and I did a drink and draw for St. Jude's with the whole Moonshine crew. Uh -huh. It went really well, really well. Awesome. And it kind of inspired us to get back because we, again, in the spirit of we know people are taking a chance on us, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to give a portion of the money back that we make to St. Jude's Hospital. That's so amazing. Wow. I, I think it's it's my favorite charity that's not, you know, uh, a, I'm really big into animal welfare, but this is yeah. the biggest, I'd say, human charity that I do. It's my favorite. Uh, it's, it's an unbelievable charity for kids and their families that are sick, mm -hmm. and uh, we will be giving a portion back uh, uh, to, to St. Jude's at the very end of this. I love that. I, I love how every bit of this campaign is just filled with positivity and wanting to give back to others, make other people feel good, get them something that's going to make them happy. I think that is something that we all need more than ever. So full kudos to you, Zach, and the entire team. Um, it's definitely something that not everybody is doing, and that's fine. Everybody has their own priorities, but I love that you guys are taking the time and effort to make such a good thing. Truly honored, Lauren, for having me exposing this to your fans. Uh, uh, we're proud of this. We're working our tails off. Uh, we're dropping two covers this week uh, on the campaign. One already sold, but there'll be one more available. But at least people can see uh, what type of fun we're having with this. Because the next, yeah. you saw the movie poster. The colors are almost done on that. And then uh, the one I'm finishing today uh, uh, wrap up pencils for is our speed racer tribute. So it's the moonshine big yeah. speed racer tribute. So lots of fun stuff to come. Another yeah. stretch goal, one more merch item. We, we got coffee cups that'll be there Monday. Ooh. So by the time people see this, you'll have, uh, if you want your moonshine Bigfoot, uh, <laughs> coffee mug to deliver your awesome, uh, brew to your mouth, uh, mm. moonshine style. There's that <laughs> available. And, uh, uh everyone's invited like i say i don't give it we that's why we have the gas money tier if you just want to give us a buck and f off that's <laughs> fine you won't you we, we would love you forever and you get to f off with your 13 free books heck yeah heck yeah no better way to do it man <laughs> well tell us where we can find you zach all that great stuff so you know once this is funded and we get that sequel people can come find you and, and back that one too Awesome, awesome. So uh, on Facebook is where I'm most popular, unfortunately. And uh, that's, uh, uh, just look me up. I'm Zach Howard, pretty easy, Z-A-C-H. Uh, okay. and, and then on Instagram, I'm space friend underscore Z, which if you're watching this, here's all my, my information back there. Um, uh, I'm not terribly popular on IG, but I'm present on it. My, my assistant is mm -hmm. making me uh, do more stuff and it's working. <laughs> on it. Uh, however, Claire Meese, the famous one, she has a hundred 
thousand followers on IG. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, my studio mates way more famous there. Steve <laughs> Ellis does well. Steve Ellis is there. Uh, everybody but Thompson Knox you can find uh, online. As far as the Kickstarter goes, uh, mm -hmm. just go to Kickstarter, type in Moonshine Bigfoot. Uh, they're they're pushing us pretty hard, fortunately, on that. You can find it mm -hmm. easily. If not, and you're listening to this, you can write down www.inked.pub slash moonshine bigfoot. And that's the that's the the non gross long link to it. The quick link. <laughs> so, Perfect. But, and, and and I'll help people out. Those of you guys watching, I'll put the links in the description below. So if you're lazy like me, you can just click like five times and you've backed a great book. So no regrets. Ooh. Five clicks. That's all it takes, guys. Just five clicks. Five clicks. Maybe four and a half clicks. We're yeah, not asking a lot. Your half, finger won't get half. tired. <laughs> <laughs> we promise. We won't we won't tire yeah. out. Your, Five's your the window. line, right? Five's where we start to get tired. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, one more click. Uh so yeah, I, I just really appreciate you having me on here and I hope people will at least check it out or show their friends or something because uh, I'm tired of making other people rich in my career. Uh, not that I'm looking to get rich. It would just be nice to have an unmolested IP without the vampires and the producers and, and uh, all these people that uh, make this fun job bad. Uh, uh, you, you're giving us our freedom and uh again not looking to get rich i'm just looking to pay the five people working on this enough to uh eat some food and pay some bills while we make this book yeah and i i promise you i promise you this is going to be one hell of a series we're we're not bringing we're bringing our combined talents we're all uh, obsessive hard workers and we're going to curl your toes i promise you blow your socks off then curl your toes <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be an event. I'm super excited, Zach. I am so appreciative of you coming on. Thanks for taking the time. Um, as Zach said, you know, all his links, I'll put them in the description below for y'all watching at home. So you can just click away and have some fun, get some great books. It's going to be awesome. Um, if you guys haven't already, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. All that super cheesy but important stuff helps us grow and helps us at the channel support great creators like Zach here. And otherwise, we will see you guys next time in the Nerdy Neighborhood.